energizing fire of the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, amen. Uh, that uh, gives us uh, the power to yes. proclaim the gospel. Uh, but this morning, uh, I want to share with you from, uh, as to what the scripture has to say about the fire uh, of judgment uh, and purification as it relates uh, to the people of God. And so reading in Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, verses 10 through 12, uh, John the Baptist said, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. So here, it, it was no more time for just playhouse. It was getting down uh, to brass tacks when it comes to the things of God. And uh, I believe uh, in the uh, early 90s, around the time of the solemn assembly and the concern meetings preceding it, uh, there was quite a song that was quite popular and that was uh, going back and part of that song says, this in, this in, or act. Uh, there's no time for playing around. Yes. And so here John the Baptist, he was saying, and now, now, also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. Mm. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than the eye, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise the Lord. Now, John the Baptist has not changed the subject here. Uh, these are back to back sentences uh, uh, he nobody's there there's not yet been any dialogue it's not that he said the axe is laid to the foot of the tree and somebody responded to him and said something else and and then uh, he replied he'll baptize you with the holy ghost and fire i uh, know that this this is a that uh, a part of what being baptized with the holy ghost and with fire means is the exact same thing as the axe being laid to the root of the tree and the, the barren branches cast into the fire. Amen. He'll baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire whose fan is in his hand. But my, you know, if you want a, a fire going real strong, Strong or, or say a, a forest fire. What's going to cause it to spread and a uh, flame at its highest is if a, a big wind comes along. Yes. So this fire that Jesus is going uh, to set, and as I said, this can be approached uh, many ways. Certainly it energizes the saints of God and uh, uh, the church of God. But it also is a fire of judgment against uh, evil. It's the fire of purification. It, it's, it's the fire that's going to burn up every branch that is not bearing fruit. And my, uh, not just uh, uh, like a, a fire from a little match. But he's going to fan this fire. Yes. Amen. Amen. That by that that fire of judgment that came with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's still burning today, and it's going to be fanned more and more. Amen. This wind of the Spirit, the flames are going to rise higher and higher, and the firing of that which is not of God whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. Praise God. We're talking about a purging fire, a purifying fire. 
and uh, it's going to burn up all the chaff, everything that is not wheat. And he's going to gather the wheat into the garner, yeah. but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Amen. Now, look at the end of this process. All the chaff is burned up. All the wheat is in the barn. Amen. Amen. Then my, well, we could take that and preach on the end gathering. We could preach on perfection. But a part of what's going to bring so much of that about is every, uh, one scripture talked about uh, a great shaking that's going to come. To where everything will be shaken out Amen. that can be shaken out until only that which cannot be shaken will remain. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And even so it is with this uh, with this fire. And especially uh, uh, when the scripture uses the uh, illustration of us being purified this gold and silver. Everything that should not be there is going to be burned out. Amen. Everything which uh, cannot burn up because of the metal that it's made of, hallelujah, is what's going to remain. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 49, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it already be kindled? Amen. He kindled a fire when he came. Yes. Oh, but, but a little spark. Just uh, the fire kindled. But it's going to uh, uh, increase uh, in, its, uh, in its intensity. I want to share with you some illustrations from the Old Testament as the New Testament tells us that these things are written for our learning uh, that, uh, so that we uh, uh, may uh, have a hope from it, learn from it. So reading from Numbers chapter 11 Numbers chapter 11 verses 1, 2, and 3 and when the people complained you know, when the Israelites were delivered from Egypt and they, they complained over and over, grumbling. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. Now, what people is this? This is God's people. Yes. Amen. Yes. That this is Israel that he's delivered out of Egyptian bondage. But, but this is God's covenant people. That this is the church in the wilderness. But they were complaining and it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled. Amen. Not just kindled uh, against the uh, uh, Ammonites but against his own people. And uh, so we reach here. Uh, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. As we go on to perfection, this burning fire is going to burn more fervently. Yeah. And if you're a branch that's not bringing forth fruit, you're going to be cut off. You're going to be cast into the fire. Amen. Among God's people. Yes. Yes, amen. This morning, I'm not preaching about those who do not know the Lord or are not a part of the church of God that's going to burn in the fire. I'm sending out a warning that there are many who are members of the church of God who will be a burnt out and burnt up. Amen. Yes, amen. 
us and rule. If they're unfaithful to their covenant to God. So here, God sent a fire among his people because of them complaining. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place a tabernacle, but uh, which means burning. Called the name of the place tabernacle because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Thank God, He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. Yes. And if people will uh, uh, repent of their mumbling and complaining or, or whatever it is that's displeasing to God, but uh, He is a forgiving God. But he's also a just God. And he must uh, punish uh, the wicked. Or else he would not be a just a judge. He would not be righteous uh, himself. So we, we see here that this judgment came upon, this fire came upon God's own people. So many scriptures in the Old Testament bear this out. The 106th Psalm, verse 40, tells us, Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against His people. Right. In so much that He abhorred His own inheritance. There was so much wickedness among His people, among the church in the wilderness, God's people, until it got to the place to where uh, uh, there his own inheritance, he abhorred them. The prophets cried out and gave warning to God's people as to how they would be consumed with fire if uh, they were not obedient to the covenant that they had made with God. The prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4, And thou, even thyself, shalt this continue from thine heritage uh, that I gave thee. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Mm -hmm. So there were those among God's heritage who would discontinue uh, from his heritage. That there uh, they would experience the fire of his anger. The prophet Isaiah said, of oh, when the boughs thereof are withered. Talking about the branches on the tree. Maybe at one time uh, but they, they were very fruitful. But now they've dried up. Yeah. They are withered. Let me tell you, when the church of God reaches perfection, she's going to be like a fruit, fruitful garden. Amen. There's not going to be anything dry about it. If I'm dried up, if I'm withered up, uh, I'll be cut off. I'm not bearing fruit. I'm a branch. I'll be cast uh, into the fire. The prophet Isaiah, he said, when the boughs thereof uh, are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he that made them. Mm -hmm. Amen. He made them his people. True. He made them his holy nation. But here, but those uh, branches that are withered, he that made them will not have mercy on them and he that formed them will show them no favor. We all know this, but how serious do, do we take it? What I'm fixing to say to everybody here, and you know, you could give a great big amen. amen. And that is, thank God for the church of God. Amen. But just having your name on the roll is not going to get you there. That's right. Just taking the covenant and saying, I will, and then you don't. Amen. It's not going to get you there. That's right. and even for those uh, who would say, well, I live up to the 29 teachings. I live up to the advice to members. Well, 
Anybody want to join the church here this morning? And if you join, what am I going to ask you? Will you accept the 29 teachers? Amen. Will you accept the apostle members? Amen. Will you accept this Bible yeah. as the Word of God? Yeah. Believe and practice yeah. its teachings. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The whole Word of God. Yeah. That's what we have covenanted to do. And you can live up to every one of the 29. You can observe the advice to members. But, but if you're failing to do like anything else but that you know the Bible teaches, you have coveted to live by the book. Yes. Amen. You'll either repent of, of that weakness, Amen. of that disobedience, or else you will be burned out You'll become a fruitless branch and cast into the fire. Amen. We need to become a totally committed to the covenant that we have made with God. Yes. John chapter 15, verse 6. The 15th chapter that talked about Jesus being the vine and us being the branches and abiding in Him. But he said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. God help us all. Are you bearing fruit? Maybe some will say, oh yes, I, I bear the fruit of the Spirit. Well, thank God for that. that that's wonderful. That's a part of the fruit that you must bear. But what, what about soul winning? What about leaving, leading others to Christ? Sharing our testimony. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I'll tell, I tell you what, can I just tell it like it is? You just leave that up to the preacher. And that's his job. And you'll become a withered branch on the vine because you're not bearing fruit and you will be cut off and you will not be a part of the perfected church. Amen. 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 Now that, that's not the Hammond's version. That's according to the King James. Amen. 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 Exactly what it says. Now if that sounds strong, if that sounds hard, nobody ever said it stronger than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The prophet Ezekiel, chapter 19, verse 14, said, And fire is gone out of the rod of her branches, which have devoured her fruit, so that she hath no strong rod. To be a scepter to rule. Now, most often the word rod in both the Hebrew and the Old Testament and the Greek and the New Testament is translated from the exact same word that scepter is translated from. And there is the uh, uh, comparisons in the scripture of the idea of a shepherd king. And his rod was his scepter uh, yeah. in ruling over the, those sheep. And where did the rod come from? It came from a branch that was on a tree. <coughs> Amen? Amen? And so that scepter represents God's government. It represents Theocracy. Amen. But here they had got in such bad shape until the branches were so withered they couldn't even find one that was strong enough but to be the scepter. Amen. The fire in the branches. She have no strong rod to be a scepter to rule. The 80th Psalm, verse 15. I'm talking about 
the power among God's people. Psalm uh, chapter 80 verse 15. And the vineyard which thy right hand have planted. Hallelujah. I believe the church of God is a vineyard which God has planted. And the branch that thou makest strong for thyself. Praise God. That is talking about theocratic government. Yeah. The branch that thou hast made strong for thyself. Because that, that branch it becomes the rod. It, it becomes uh, uh, the scepter. But that branch that God made strong. Hallelujah. He chose that branch. He made it strong. You know, God has sent some in the church. Apostles, prophets, pastors, <coughs> teachers, evangelists. Yeah. All part of the government of the, of the, of the church. He made a, a strong branches for himself. In that vineyard that he had planted. But the, here it said, it is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy accountants. Hallelujah. How sad it is to see those who are strong branches that God places in, in the church as, as rulers, used mighty of God. And somehow they get off, off track. They're burned with fire. They're cut down. They perish at his rebuke. Why does this happen? Isaiah chapter 5, uh, verses 24 and 25 said, The fire devoured the stone, and the flame consumeth the chaff. Be called. Could everybody say because? Because. because. Why, why does this happen? Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Now even in the history of the church of God in these last days, oh, we've seen hundreds of thousands that did exactly that. And some uh, numbered among those uh, who were uh, cut off, uh, even going around the million mark, or possibly over. But the, the fire, uh, the fire, the stubble. There's more that used to be a part of us. Multiply times more than what's still with us. Amen. They've been cut off. Amen. And the fiery judgment of God against them. Bless you, Lord. And thank God we're still left in time. Yes. Amen. But God's not. God's not a, a true. Why should any of us think that we're so special? That if God has already cut off hundreds of thousands, That's right. that left us, it would seem, compared to them in number, it's just a handful. Yeah. Phew. But oh, God can't cut me off. <laughs> well, what's so much better about a you <coughs> me than about those hundreds of thousands that have already been cut off? I'm talking about people that made a covenant of to accept of what's written in this book. That they were strong branches. That they began to compromise. Amen. We can say, look what happened to them. Well, what about what's going to happen to some of us? The 
fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff. Because, this is why, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. You find that because other places. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses 23 through 27. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor berry nor any grass groweth therein like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abba and Zeboah. You say, well, that's Old Testament. Again, I can point you to hundreds of thousands that spiritually that has happened to in your lifetime. That fire of judgment is still burning. It's still consuming. It says, like the mentioned the overthrow which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto that land? No. Wherefore hath the Lord done, done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because. Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. Then yeah. verse 27 said, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the land yeah. to bring upon it all the curses Ugh. that are written in the book. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's a lot of blessings written in this book. But there's a lot of curses that's written in this book. You obey the book, you're blessed. You disobey it, you will be cursed. <clears throat> the curse is just as strong as the blessings are. Amen. The God that made heaven prepared a place for us. Hallelujah. Streets of gold, gates of pearl. All the precious loved ones waiting us on, on the other side. Oh, what a wonderful God. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, how, how, how could He provide for it in any more perfection than what we are assured that He's done? Amen. What a great, awesome God. But let me tell you, he is no less great. He is no less awesome when it comes to his judgment upon the ungodly. That's right. It's just as real of those blessings in the, uh, in the ultimate extreme. Even so, this awesome, powerful God is uh, cursed to the ultimate extreme. The suffering from God's judgment and from this fire were so bad until it would be impossible for it to be any worse. Just as surely as it would be impossible for heaven to be any sweeter than it's going to be. We can either experience the blessings of this book or we can experience the curses of all that is written in. Amen. We can be delivered from the fire of God's judgment. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise he, has, he has provided an evacuation Amen. route. Amen. Yes. A way of escape. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's told us just the way to go. Hallelujah. To escape the, the flames. <clears throat> though they be all around us, though they be in front of us, though they be behind us. 
to escape the fire of Satan that's coming against people to destroy them. Yeah. But also to escape uh, God's uh, backfire that's uh, even more fervent and intense in his flames. And there we are caught in the middle. And my time is of the essence. Time's running out. Uh, uh, we should not be among those who will say, I'm, I'm not going to leave my house. That's right. And the flames keep coming. Let me tell you, time, time is short. We better go uh, that path uh, that God has provided for us. Yes. Yes. Oh. Wherefore have the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because. Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. Verse 27. The anger of the Lord. Experienced in the curses written in the book. Isaiah 66, 23. And it shall come to pass. So part of these verses. That all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. The time is coming when the earth will be full of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And everything therein will worship him. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Praise God, there'll be those who are left in Zion when it's all said and done. But on our way to that perfection and the ultimate blessings that God has prepared, we look at the wayside and we see dead carcasses. Some of you could call someone by name. How sad. But we keep marching on. Amen. You know, they say boot camp is, is a tough place to be. That's a fact. And some of you could, could tell me. But I dare, I dare to say that in boot camp, and in the training, okay, that there's some that almost have a heat stroke. And everybody that starts out in the race, that some of them might fall by the wayside. And so here, on the way to all that God has prepared, how wonderful it is. But on the way as we go forth, we see the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Amen. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. It's almost like you see their dead body laying there. But that's not the end of them. That soul burning through eternity. I'm talking about some that were in this march with us, brother. And I'm talking about some who were still in this march with us. Amen. There are those who are marching with us. Amen. They're right in step. That something's going to happen. Yeah. And we'll see their dead carcass laying by the wayside. Said, oh God, don't let it be me. <laughs> Could everybody say, oh God, don't let it be me? Oh God. Oh God, don't let it be me. Could you say it again? Oh God, don't let it be me. Could we say of our brother or our sister, oh God, don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. I want to be among those who are left in Zion.
before there'll ever be a great in gathering, you can mark it down. I believe you can mark it. Uh, uh, if you search, you can uh, find it in the book and mark it uh, later. Before there'll be a great in gathering, there's going to be a great outgoing. This thing cannot be without spot and wrinkle until all the spots and the wrinkles and the blemishes are no longer a part of it. Right. 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 Isaiah chapter 42 verses 24 and 25 said they would not walk in his ways neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore same meaning as because in the context here. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. A fire in front of him, the fire of Satan. God's back fire about behind him, the fire all round about. But then it said, yet he knew not. There are those right in the middle of the, uh, of the fire and they, the, they're so the seed they don't even realize what's going on. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. There are members of the church of God. They may take the flag, they may run with it. They may feel real secure. But if they're falling short of what they know the Bible says they should be doing. Amen. I'm talking about all of it. Yeah. Praise God. I'm talking about forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. Hallelujah. I'm even talking about not paying your tithes. Yeah. Just your name on the book. Let me change that. Just my name on the book is not going to get me there. Amen. Now, I apologize to all of you on the internet. I know you may. Uh, don't think the rapture has took place if every once in a while you don't see me on the screen. I find myself walking quite a, quite a bit. <laughs> Did not lay it to heart. Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And let me tell you on the internet, I am not just preaching to the south side here this morning. Amen. I'm preaching to the states. I'm preaching to the nations. I'm preaching to the church of God around the world. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of, uh, of the and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves. Didn't say God sanctified them. And it's not talking about God sanctifying them here in this verse. They that sanctify themselves. And purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. It's talking about the pagan groves where they worship the false gods. And they uh, pretend in this worship that they were uh, becoming sanctified and purified. But it said eating swine's flesh. That's not kosher. God said what was clean, what was unclean, what they should eat, what they should not eat. 
this not acceptable. And the abomination and the mouse. In their pagan worship, they were eating the mouse that God had said is unclean. Don't, don't, it, don't eat mice. But because they're doing it, they can say they're sanctified, they can say they're purified, but they shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Deuteronomy 32 and 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn into the Lord's tail. Went on to say, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Verse 24. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. Verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. This is Moses. Some of his last words. Knowing that he would not enter into the promised land. His time is just about over. And he's telling uh, the future of those among God's people who would not walk according to uh, his law. And he said, oh, that they understood this. That they would consider their repent. In the same book, Deuteronomy, earlier, in the fourth chapter, he had said, Take heed. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye you forget the covenant of the Lord your God. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. It's verses 23. And 24. You're familiar with the history of the Old Testament. The great apostasies in the times of the kings of Israel and Judah. We read in 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 13. What are we going to do about this? said, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because, there it is again, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written. Verse 17, Because, Went on to say, they provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But thank God for the ray of hope in those verses that said, inquire of the Lord, inquire of the Lord concerning the words of this book. The prophet Jeremiah he pronounced God's judgment. But also he told them they would not hear it. How to have God's favor. Jeremiah 4 and 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. And take away the foreskins of your heart. Cut everything away from your heart. That God has said should not be there. Ye men of Judah. Again not the Ammonites. Ye men of Judah. And inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Again, Jeremiah said in chapter 17, verse 27, But if you will not hearken unto me, which they did not, Went on to say, Then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Yes, and it shall not be quenched. Those beautiful palaces burnt down. When I say that, I think of a tabernacle that was torn down. 
palaces of Jerusalem. Jeremiah's called a weeping prophet. Wrote the book of Lamentations, which contain, tells us what he weeped about. Lamentations 2 and 3. He says he have cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. Now that doesn't mean they burn up all the saxophones and the trumpets. But the horn represented power. Amen. And yes, they make horn, a horns out of horns, I guess you'd say. They'll take the horn of an animal, make a musical uh, instrument uh, uh, out of it. But, and, and they'll sound that horn. They call the armies together for battle. And the horn became a symbol of power. But he cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of his, not only so, a strong animal that had horns on his head that was a, a, a sign of his power. But God in his fierce anger cut off the horn of Israel. He has thrown back his right hand from before the enemy, that hand of protection, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth. And you, can, when you read about this fire in the Old Testament over and over and over, you come across these two words, round about. A fire in front of you, a fire behind you. I think of that as the fire of Satan want to destroy people. And the backfire of God that, that's coming against it, that's even stronger. You don't want to get caught in 